In this short video, I'm going to talk about an active scale feature called Object Lock. Object Lock is a mechanism to ensure data remains unaltered or immutable for a specified period of time. There are regulatory bodies that have been requiring some types of data to be stored in an immutable fashion for many years now. This is primarily for auditing and to guarantee historical accuracy. But those rules affect only a subset of businesses. Unfortunately, an ugly reality has surfaced over the past few years, and that is the threat of malware and ransomware attacks. So suddenly, immutability is not just for regulated businesses anymore. Now everybody needs to defend their data against unauthorized attempts to gain access to and alter your data for malicious or financial reasons. And keeping your data immutable while it has business value is key in that defense. As with just about any operating system, you're going to have some inherent functionality and some functionality that is designed simply to make life easier. As an example, some functionality inherent to ActiveScale would be things like put, get, how we place data, so forth. Usability functions would be things like a graphical user interface, reporting, alerts, and automated monitoring. You really don't absolutely need these to have a functioning system. They just give the system as a whole a more pleasant user experience. The reason I mention this is to make the point that object lock falls into the category of an inherent function. Now you can choose not to use object lock. You can choose when, where, and how to use object lock. But once an object is being protected, you can't just turn it off or work around it. And because object lock is a low-level function, to understand how it protects your data, I'm going to need to start with some very basics of how data is stored in ActiveScale. When data is written to ActiveScale, it is stored in containers called buckets. And these buckets have attributes or metadata. Bucket-level attributes allow you to apply different rules to different collections of data. The discrete unit that is stored in a bucket is called an object and objects have metadata as well. Object level attributes allow you to very precisely assign rules at the individual object level. And when you write data to ActiveScale, that's called a put. You put objects into buckets. As part of that put function, the object will inherit some attributes from the parent bucket. Not all attributes are inheritable, but some are mandatory and will be inherited by each object. Let's look at a simple example. At the object level, we would have attributes such as, well, we would have an object ID, in this case, Frank's object. We would have a creation date. And we might even define some custom metadata so we know a little bit of information about the object. At the bucket level, we might have attributes such as a bucket ID, we'll have a creation date. We can enable versioning at the bucket level and every object that goes in that bucket can be versioned. We can enable object lock at the bucket level. Every object that goes in that bucket will have a retention period. And we can define a default retention period, in this case, two years. What this means is when an object is put in that bucket, it will have a retention period. If you do not specify a retention period, it will pick up the default of two years. So when we put that object into that bucket, the object is going to inherit some attributes. Let's take a look. We have some attributes that were defined when we created the object. And we also have one here that was inherited. This object inherited the retention period of two years. Notice the creation date. That is the system time of when the object was put into the bucket. And notice the retain until date. It is exactly two years after the creation date, as specified by the default retention time. Now a thing to note, you can specify your own retention. It can be less than the default, it can be more than the default. But once set, it can't be shortened or removed. It can be extended, but not shortened. At this point, I'm going to switch over to a demo to show you how this works. Yeah. 
What I have open on my desktop is the ActiveScale user interface. I'll use that to create a bucket, enable object lock, and set a default retention period. I also have a terminal open. In the terminal, I'm going to use an S3 client called AWS CLI to issue some API level commands. You could use any S3 client that supports object lock, but I chose this because it's very common and widely used. And for this demonstration, I'm using API level commands for a reason. When malware finds its way into a system, however it does that, tailgates on a piece of freeware, maybe a mystery thumb drive, whatever, it's going to try to attack using the most obscure method possible. And that would be the API. Every system has one. You can't communicate with the system without one. The average user may never even touch the API, but that is the path for hacking. So let's get started. I'll log into ActiveScale. And at the moment, I have no buckets. So I will create a bucket. I will call this bucket demo. I'm going to enable versioning. I'm going to enable object lock. And I'm going to define a retention period. Let's keep it at one year for this demo. And it is that easy. If we look at this bucket, we can see some of its attributes. Versioning is enabled and object lock is enabled. So let's go to the API. The first thing I'm going to do is list the bucket. I'm not going to explain all these commands, but you can see what I'm trying to do is use the S3 API to list the buckets for my user. And as you can see, my user has one bucket called demo. Now let's look at the object lock configuration for that bucket. So here's the command. I'm using the S3 API to get the object lock configuration on the bucket we just created. And what it says here, object lock is enabled and we have a default retention period of one year. Now let's go ahead and put an object in that bucket. Okay, so I'm going to use the S3 API to put an object and we're going to call that object Frank's object and we're going to put it in the bucket demo. Okay, that's been put. Let's just make sure it's been put. Let's list the object. And again, I'm going to use the S3 API to list objects in bucket demo. And it looks like we have one object in there and it is called Frank's object. So this command lists objects in the bucket and shows you some of their attributes. Modified date, that's when we actually created the object. And of course the object name, in this case, Frank's object. So we know it's been stored in that bucket. Let's look at its retention period. So this command says we're going to use the S3 API to get the object retention attributes from an object called Frank's object. And as you can see, this object is under retention in compliance mode, and we have a retain until date of 2021, exactly one year after the creation date. We did not specify a retention period when we put this object, so it picked up the default. Let's make sure it works. Let's try to delete it. And so what this command is doing, we're going to use the S3 API. We're going to issue the delete object command for Frank's object in bucket demo. And as you can see, what we got when we tried to delete that was an access denied. So there is no way, shape, or form anyone is going to be able to delete modify or change this object while it is being protected by object lock. So let's go back to the slide deck and just summarize this video. Objects in a lock enabled bucket have a retention period. Objects under retention are immutable. 
and retention periods can be extended but not shortened or removed. And finally, immutability is your protection against accidental modifications or malicious attacks. For more information on ActiveScale and how you can use Object Lock to protect your data, visit our website.